Where to start? Well, one of the things we need to look at is the, the dimensions of the pump. And most manufacturers have a chart that's going to tell you for this size pump you need a minimum diameter basin. So this is a catalog sheet of one of our 61 HD pumps. We have both a simplex and a duplex on here. And I believe for the 61, it's going to tell us up at the top there that it requires a 36 inch minimum diameter basin for a simplex 61 HD. In the duplex, it tells us that we need 42 inch diameter. And again, those are minimum diameters that we need for that particular pump. So what else do we need to know? We need to know what the performance of this particular pump is. And we're going to have an equation in a little bit here to where we're going to plug values in, but Q is the value typically used for the gallons per minute. And we're going to, like I said, we'll work up to that. So it's not the design point. It's what the pump actually does at this particular design point. So earlier we had that 270, and I think what was our design point? It was 40 gallons per minute at 21 feet ahead. But when we actually looked it up, it was really doing, what, like 56 gallons a minute, I think, is what the, the pump curve showed us. So we want to make sure we plugged in that 56 gallons per minute, because again, that's what the pump will actually be doing. So we're going to look at this chart. I imagine you've probably seen these charts. I know when I worked out in the field, I had a cheat sheet that I carried with me in my little binder everywhere. Um, and it tells us how many gallons per inch the particular diameter basins, how much it holds. So for example, a 24 inch diameter basin holds 1.96 uh, gallons of water per inch. So anyway, you can go down the chart there. A 36 inch basin holds 4.41, 48 holds 7.83. So we could take that gallons per inch and we can multiply it out. So we can say this is a, whatever, a 36 by 96 inch basin. Um, we can take the 96 times 4.41 and we can figure out how, exactly how many gallons that basin will hold. So again, the important thing is, is where does that inlet come in? If that inlet comes in halfway down, then we've lost everything from that inlet up. We don't want to ever go above the inlet because, um, like we talked about earlier with scouring velocity and so forth, if the water gets above the inlet, the water is going to back up in that inlet pipe. You're going to start having problems with solids building up in that pipe. They're not going to be flowing out into the basin. They're going to start settling out in the piping system. So again, we want to have a good working volume. We, we don't want to use anything above the inlet coming into that basin. Everything above that is wasted space. So here's a little equation. So Q, which was mentioned in the previous slide, is the capacity of the pump in gallons per minute. So like I was mentioning just a minute ago, that real world application that we were doing, we had a pump, our design point was 40 gallons per minute, but when we actually looked at the pump curve, and we figured it up at 21 feet ahead, that pump was doing like 56 gallons a minute. We would want to use the 56 gallons per minute here. It's not our design point, it's what it's actually flowing. So in a good rule of thumb that we use is whatever the pump pumps times three, and that will determine our, our working volume in there. So we'll take our gallons per minute, we'll multiply it by three, we're gonna divide it by the gallons per inch that we just got off of the, the previous slide. We're then gonna figure in what the invert location is gonna be. So where does that inlet come into the basin? Is it 48 inches down? Is it 36 inches down? How far down is that? So however far down it is, say it's 36 inches down, we're gonna put 36 inches in place of the D there. And then the 24 is the minimum that we were gonna keep in the bottom of the pit at all times. So we're gonna add those two together. So that 36 and the 24. So we have another example here. Our pump's gonna do 350 gallons per minute. And they decided that they're gonna use a 60 inch diameter basin, or they would like to. 
the inverts at 30 inches below grade, and they're going to have the pump shut off at 24 inches. So they've plugged it all in here, 350 times 3 divided by 12.24, which that was the gallons per inch that a 60-inch basin would hold. And then they're going to add the 34 and the 24, which is the, the distance above the inlet and the, the amount of water that we're keeping in the bottom at all times. So in this particular case, when we get done, they need a 12-foot basin, 11 feet 0.6, so a 60 by 12 inch or 60 by 144 inch deep basin is what they need for this particular application. This is something I think that gets missed a lot is the sizing of the basin. And again, it's one of those areas that if you choose something that's too small, there just may not be a good fix for it. If you go with a basin that's too big, you can always make a longer run time. Nothing wrong with that. I used to use the analogy of highway driving versus city driving with your car. You know, if you can do highway driving where you can get out and just run for long periods of time, um, the, the pump will last longer, your car will last longer, the brakes last longer, everything just goes longer. If you're in the city all the time and you're doing a lot of starts and stops, just like with a pump, all the starts and stops are going to cause heat, it's going to generate heat, it's going to wear things out quicker, your brakes are going to wear out faster, everything's going to wear out faster because you're just always starting and stopping. So again, if you can use a, a basin that is bigger, you can get a longer runtime. 